beautiful, beautiful bookish people. My name is Hannah, and today is that time of the year where we reflect and look at our Goodreads challenge and see how well we did. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. I'm going to tell you what I loved, what I didn't love, and maybe what fell in between. As we go through my 2018 reading challenge, I'm going to give you my star rating, a one sentence summary, and because my name is Snow White Reader, a dwarf to sum up my feelings. So without further ado, I think we should just jump on into it. Ready Player One by Ernest Cline. I gave it three stars, it was a reread for me, and Futuristic Nerd Treasure Hunt. And I'm gonna give it Dopey, because I noticed there were some flaws upon a reread. The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstein, I gave this five stars, wow. A mysterious circus, complicated relationship, and it's a possible Tempest retelling. And the dwarf I'm going to give it is Doc. I feel like it took a lot of planning, and it made me feel smarter afterwards. The Book Thief by Marcus Suzak, another reread. I gave this five stars. Was there any surprise there? I hope not. Touching historical fiction narrated by Death. And I'm going to give this Snow White because I think it's perfect and no one should change anything about it. Moving on. The Waves by Virginia Woolf. Experimental story narrated by six friends dealing with grief. And I'm going to give it Bashful. Because with Woolf you always get this sense of trying to understand life, if that makes sense. Like what's your purpose? How are we dealing with that? And all those emotions mixed in. So yes, Bashful. First and then by Emma Mills. Uh, Pride and Prejudice elements mixed with um, football. Four stars. And I'm going to give it happy because I think it was just a really cute, well-structured story. A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mack. I gave this two stars. This is supposed to be a Beauty and the Beast retelling, but ends up being a romance-heavy, soft porn fairy book. And I'm actually currently rereading this because I have an idea for it, but hopefully you'll see that soon. And I'm going to give it grumpy because I had quite a few issues with it. <laughs> Next, I read Star Girl. I gave this three stars. So it's about like a middle grade that speaks on topics of nonconformity. I think, I think this one is sneezy because there were some elements that I thought ended up kind of being creepy or it turned out that way. I don't think the author intended it to be that way, but yeah. Next I read A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. I gave this five stars. Uh, family, troubles, monster dreams, and magical realism. I kind of wish there was a crying dwarf because I would choose that one for this one, but instead I'm gonna go with Docs. Everything was just well executed. Next I read Fragments of the Lost. I gave this four stars. A pretty solid YA thriller, but probably wouldn't pick it up again, but I feel like that about most thrillers. After one read, I'm kind of done with them. And for that one, I'm going to give it Sleepy because it did have some slow parts, and Dot because that ending did really blow me away. Next, I read This Adventure Ends, also by Emma Mills. I gave this four stars because, honestly, I love short books. Kind of um, a fish out of water, a girl moves from New York to Florida to become a newcomer in this friend group. It deals with relationships, um, friendships, and finding a painting. I'm going to give this happy because it was just cute. I liked it. I would recommend it. So the next play I read was 12 Angry Men. 12 men arguing about... Oh no! 12 men arguing about someone's innocence and life. I gave it five stars, and because of that, I'm going to give it Snow White, because I think it's just a classic play. I don't think everyone should read it, but um, I do recommend the movie, because I think it handles it well. Next, I read Shakespeare in Charge. This is just um, a guide to leadership told through the lens of Shakespeare references. I gave it three stars. I'm going to give it Sleepy, because like it's just not for me. It's... Not what I wanted. I'll say that. Next, I read Geekerella. I gave this four stars. It's just a modern day retelling of Cinderella with fandom elements. I'm gonna fall back to happy because 
I think it was just really cute and done really well and it was more than I expected because I didn't think I was going to like it as much as I did. Next is How I Live Now by Megan Roscoff. I gave this two stars. It's a YA classic but I feel like it was not worth the praise. I'm going to give it a grumpy because it was kind of written in stream of consciousness which can work but I didn't feel like did for this one. And then I read Another Day by David Levelton, which is every day from from the girl's perspective. And I gave this three stars. I didn't really like it. I didn't think it was needed. I don't know why he wrote it. It didn't add anything new or tell me anything different. Grumpy. And then I read Love Her Wild by Atticus. This is a poetry collection mixed in with his photography. And in my opinion, it was really surface level poetry. I didn't really like it. I'm going to give it a B because I didn't think it was anything special. <laughs> then I read The Sun and Her Flowers by Rupi Kaur. I gave this four stars and in my opinion it's better than Milk and Honey. I enjoyed it ten times more. And if you're ever like doubting Rupi Kaur, I suggest looking her up on YouTube and watching her perform it because I really think it can change your opinion on Rupi Kaur. I'm going to give it happy because... I really liked it. Then I read Adolescence by Gabby Hanna. I gave this one star. I thought this was pretty cheap poetry in an effort to get money from fans. <laughs> I didn't own it. I just read it in a Barnes and Noble and I'm glad I did because I feel like it would be a waste of money. And you know what? I don't even think this deserves a dwarf. That's how I feel about it. Then I read The Wild Party. This is a poem, and I read it because I love the musical, because it has Sutton Foster in it. I give it four stars. This is what I want storytelling poetry to be. I think it was done really well, and it has a rhythm, and I miss when poetry has rhythm. Bashful, because it kind of has some blush-worthy moments, if you know what I mean. Then I read The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. I gave this, I gave this five stars, which I don't remember doing. It's just a fairy adventure with a modern or a normal girl trying to navigate where she wants to be and who she wants to be with. And also possible hate to love trope, but I don't feel like it's developed that well in this one. Sneezy, because like, you know like when you're going like, <laughs> up to That's how I felt with this book, because you kind of don't know where the plot is going. You're like, oh, <gasps> are we going over there? <gasps> are we going over there? No, we're going <laughs> over here. Then I read I Am Princess X which I really enjoyed. I gave it four stars. It's a contemporary fandom mystery. And I'm going to give it a combo of Doc and Happy because I thought it was well executed and it was a good story. Then I read The Essential Byron. This is a collection of Lord Byron's poetry that people deem are essential. I gave this four stars, but I love Lord Byron, so it's no surprise. It deserves a Snow White because I think Lord Byron is perfect. And he's my favorite poet. Next, I read Stardust by Neil Gaiman. I gave this five stars. It's a story following this guy who's on pursuit of a girl. And in order to win this girl's affection, the girl says, go catch that falling star. And he does, and it turns out to be more than he thought he it was. And it's, you know, classic Neil Gaiman, great writing style. Not my favorite, but still pretty good. Um, a modern day fairy tale that plays with its tropes. It's cool. Snow White! Then I read Poet's Choice. I gave this five stars. It's just a collection of poetry that people like. I'm gonna give it Doc because I felt smarter afterwards. Then I read Beauty Queens by Little Ray. I gave this three stars and it's kind of Lord of the Flies if it was Beauty Queen. I'm gonna give this grumpy, but this is totally on me because I figured it out this year that I don't like satire in books. Then I read The Road, and I gave this two stars. I didn't really like it. It's a Pulitzer Prize winner, and I usually find that Pulitzer Prize winners are very um, polarizing, and I fell on the latter end of it. I found it to be too simplistic to the extent of like it could mean anything, which I guess could be genius, but for me it fell flat. I'm going to give it sneezy because I want a chew away from it. <laughs> and then I read The Cupcake Queen, which is a cute little middle grade. I gave it three stars. It's like a cutesy romance featuring baking. I'm going to give it happy because it couldn't be anything but happy. 
Then I read Strange Fire by Tommy Wallach. This one is going to be hard to explain. It's like post-religion because God's daughter has already come down and like a ragtag team taking down technology. It was good. I'm gonna give it stock because it was well executed. You know what it was like? It was like a young adult city of Ember. Then I read Boy in the Striped Pajamas. I gave this three stars. It's a Holocaust hisfic middle grade book. I'm gonna give it a dot because I understand why it's beloved, but for me it kind of fell flat. Oh, and then I read <laughs> Troublemakers Come Back and I gave this one star, but I read the sequel first instead of the first one, but I still think it negates that it was a bad book. She Walks in Beauty, a poetry collection. I gave this three stars. I thought it was going to be about a woman expressing her life through poetry, but it's just like a random selection of hodgepodge poetry. I'm going to give it dopey for, because of me because I kind of didn't research it. Then I read Steal Your Art, and I gave this five stars. I think everybody should read this if you're a creative, uh, a painter, a writer, um, a pianist. I think every creative person should read this. It encouraged me so much this year. I'm going to give it a snow light. It's really short. You can read it, I promise. It's really good. It's worth it. And you can add it to your Goodreads challenge. Then I read Is Everyone Hanging Out Without Me and Other Concerns by Mindy Kalin. I gave this four stars. Bashful and Doc, because it was good, and it kind of is a little, oh, okay, I don't know what that was, but y you get it. Then I read Three Sides of a Heart, this is an anthology of um, short stories all of surrounding love triangles, I gave it three stars, and it's my typical problem with anthologies, I tend to see it has some really good stories and one that falls flat. The Hulky story was pretty great, because it was a love triangle between two people in a city. Doc and Dopey, because some of them were great, but some of them were dumb. And then I read 101 Famous Poems. I gave this four stars, but how could I not, because it's famous poems. How can I not give it Doc, because it was pretty great. Next, I read The Secret Keeper by Trenton Lee Stewart, and Trenton Lee Stewart never lets me down. I gave it five stars. It's about a boy who finds a watch, and that can turn you invisible. And it's all about puzzle solving and problem solving. And it's a great middle grade, I would suggest it. I'm actually gonna give it Snow White. Then I read The Diabolic and I gave this three stars. And to be fair, sci-fi is not for me. I don't really reach for it that often. It's a sci-fi bodyguard love story. Sneezy, because it didn't do it for me. Now begins the segment of I read a lot of poetry. I read Walt Whitman's selected poems. Four stars, because I actually enjoyed Walt Whitman's poetry maybe the most out of the Bashful and Doc, because it's classic and dirtier than I expected. James Joyce collection of poetries, and this one fell flat for me. I didn't really like it. I think I gave it three stars, and I'm going to give it sleepy, because James Joyce and I, we just don't jive. And then I read Little Monsters by Kara Thomas. I gave this three stars, and it's a high school thriller with mean girls manipulating situation and this one has an interesting dwarf selection i'm gonna give it bashful in the beginning pretty good doc in the middle and then it had a dumb ending so i'm gonna give it dopey <laughs> then i read percy shelley's poetry i gave this four stars the only reason i read this is because percy shelley is friends with lord byron i'm gonna give it happy it was pretty good then i read the swan and this is like a prairie love story that people relate to animals. And I'm going to give it Dopey because it was kind of weird at times, but in the best possible way. Then I read Ya Yeats. I'm so sorry. I'll never do it again, I promise. Look, the book is offended. Which is a collection of poetry. Whoa, big surprise sleepy because Yeats uses too many nature analogies. Then I read Blood Red Road and I gave this five stars. It was really good. I thought everything was developed superbly and I have the other two books sitting there waiting for me to read it. It's kind of a southern dystopian rescue mission for a brother. Snow White. 
This song will save your life. I gave this four stars. Oldie but goldie, if you know what I mean. Um, a doc, because I think anybody could possibly relate to it if you were in high school. Secret Life, Undercover DJ, and Trigger Warning for Self-Harm. Then I read You Can't Take It With You. I gave this three stars. It's a classic play, and it's just about a domestic family navigating life. Bashful and dopey, because to today's standards, it could be kind of dumb, but it's still cute. Then I read Jonathan Livingston Siegel. I gave this two stars. I think this is because of me, because I just didn't jive with the writing style and the metaphors. Grumpy. Uh, Doll's House, I gave four stars. This is one of the best plays I read this year. It's a really well-developed play about a woman and slowly becomes a doll in a dollhouse, as the metaphor would say. Or a bird in a cage. You can decide when you read it. Snow White. Just a great play. Then I read Anne Rand's Night of January 16th, but this play, in my opinion, was trying to be dramatic, but just turned into a melodrama with unrealistic characters and flaws. Grumpy. I read The Future of Us. I gave this three stars. It's an old YA and in my opinion doesn't age well, mostly due to the technology. Dopey, because it was, again, it was just kind of dumb. I read A Study in Charlotte and I gave this three stars. This is a modern retelling of Sherlock and Watson where Sherlock is a woman. Sneezy. Because I thought it was good, I just had some issues with the plots. Island by Huxley. I had the same problems with this as I did Brave New World. I feel that Huxley is a writer who desires to change your opinions on something I don't think I'll ever change. Sneezy. Not bad? Not for me. Like a good old sneeze. Then I read The Essex Serpent and I gave this four stars. I thought it was really great. A hispic about a feminist woman Pursuing science and the Essex serpent if it's real or not real. A good old Snow White because I don't have any problems with it. The rest of us just live here by Patrick Ness. Three stars and it's about these group of teenagers who are not the protagonists that YA would traditionally see. You know how traditionally YA would follow the hero? This is about the people who just live around all superheroes save our world. I'm gonna give it a sleepy because I didn't think it was that good. <laughs> the Heart of Betrayal by Mary E. Pearson. I gave this, dang it, three stars. This is a continuation of the Kiss of Deception series. It was good, but I do feel like it has that second book syndrome because a lot of it dragged. Sleepy. Then we have The Astonishing Color of After, which I loved. I gave it five stars. It's a magical realism book that handles topics of grief and trying to find yourself after a tragic incident. Snow White. Then I read Crimes of the Heart. I gave this four stars. It's about three sisters trying to discover what they want to do, what they want to be. Some of it dealing with anxiety, seeing life from a different lens. I want to give this Snow White because I just thought it was a great play. The Carrie by Stephen King. This was the first ever re book review I did on this channel. I gave it four stars. It's a classic bloody thriller mystery and gave us Stephen King. So, but I'm gonna give it a dopey because some of it was kind of dumb and took a long time to get where you wanted to be. Then I read Allegedly, which is the YA version of Carrie, essentially. And I'm glad I kind of read them back to back because I could really see the parallels. And in my opinion, allegedly handled it better. <laughs> Snow White. I read A Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds, and I think this is one of my top books of the year. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really great. It's about a boy in an elevator ride seeking revenge for his brother. Snow White. It was perfect. Everyone should read it. I read Pivot Point. And I gave this four stars. This is a sci-fi or dystopian, maybe mixed between the two, where kids have different powers, and our girl here can kind of see into the future if she wants to. And I think it's underrated, and I think a lot more people should read it. And I'm going to give it a doc because I think it was well executed. Then I read Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda. I gave this three stars. It was pretty good, but I just had some minor issues with it. I'm going to give it bashful because it's pretty cute. I read 
the witch doesn't burn in this one and i gave this three stars mostly because i feel like it fell flat in comparison to the princess saves herself in this sleepy jane unlimited which i loved five stars of course i did and it's about our girl named Jane traveling life in kind of different situations and scenarios. It's hard to explain, but I promise it's really good. Snow White. I thought it was perfect. I read Alive's and Her Monsters, which is possibly the biggest disappointment this year. I gave it two stars. It's about our girl named Eliza, who is the designer of a webcomic, and bumps into a boy who does fan art for said webcomic. Grumpy. Then I read Letters to the Lost which I gave five stars. This is my first buddy read of the year. Shout out, Nadia, you're great. We should do another buddy read soon. Snow White. Truly Devious, and I gave this four stars. A boarding school mystery. I'm gonna give it a good old doc, because you have to be smart to solve those riddles. Possibly my most despised book this year, The Siren by Kira Cass. I gave this one star. This is a mermaid love story that's not worth your time. Grumpy. Save the Date by Marty Matson. A Snow White. Then I read Fixing Delilah. I gave this four stars. It's kind of an underrated contemporary. I'm gonna give this one Snow White too. Then I read Little Do We Know by Tamara Ireland Stone and this is the book I probably connected with the most. It's about these two friends named Hannah and Emery and they're dealing with friendship troubles as they navigate the world and different worlds and separating and coming together. I'm confused. It's pretty good. You should read it. I read The Poet X which is another book told in verse like a long way down and it handles topics of religion finding comfort in poetry and shout out to jocelyn for making me read like a doc and a happy that seems right then i read faking normal by courtney k stevenson i gave this four stars this handles topics similar to speak but i think oh, you can't even see it that this one handles it better doc Orpheus Descending by Tennessee Williams. This is a retelling of a Greek tragedy. Snow White. Then I read Monday is Not Coming by Tiffany D. Jackson. Kind of dual timelines and discovering secrets about a girl who's gone missing. I gave it four stars. I'm going to give it Snow White. The Woman in the Window by A.J. Fitt. I'm going to give it a doc, but a grumpy because it was really good. Yeah, I can see why people talk about it. There's just like some things that really bothered me. Next, I read Diary of an Oxygen Thief. I really hated this book. Grumpy. Then I read You by Caroline Kepnes, which I gave three stars. It tells the story of Joe, who's a cute bookseller who turns out he might be a stalker. Doc and Sneezy, because I thought it was good. And just some of the plot was kind of mishmash for me. Didn't understand what was happening. The Face on the Milk. And this is about a girl who discovers she might have been kidnapped because she sees her face on a milk carton. Which sounds exciting, right? Wrong. I gave it three stars. It was really boring. Okay. Everybody Sees the Ants by A.S. King, which was a great book. I'm really happy I read it this year. I gave it five stars. I want to say trigger for pretty he severe bullying, though. And then I read the back of I Daphne du Maurier, which I gave five stars. And um, I think everybody should read it. And Snow White, because it was perfect and no one can tell me otherwise. My Lady Jane, which I gave one star. And again, because I don't think satire suits books. It's just my opinion. Grumpy. And then I read Fallen Kingdoms, and I gave this two stars. Because imagine your basic fantasy. This was that on white bread. So I'm going to give it dopey because I thought it was kind of dumb. Then I read Sea Fire by Natalie C. Parker. I gave it three stars because it was just a lot of missed potential in my opinion. I'm going to give it a special combination of a dopey and a grum. Then I read Bus Stop, which is possibly my favorite play. And I gave it five stars. It's just like a snapshot of life as we watch these lies untangle as a snowstorm passes in the distance. Snow White. Then I read Fight Club. And I gave this four stars. I thought it was really good. I didn't know why I was snoozing on it for so long. Dope. Because I felt like I was on dope after reading this. Then I read The Nest by Kenneth Appel. And I gave this five stars. It's about this kid 
who is kind of suffering with OCD and his parents are in the hospital a lot because his younger sister or her, the baby is kind of struggling for life and so he starts having these dreams about the angels and makes a deal with them. Snow White. Then I read The Hazelwood. I gave this four stars. I liked it. It seems to be an unpopular opinion, but I had a good old time reading it. Isn't that right, Sneezy? Mostly because some of the pop was just like, I don't know where you're going and what you're doing. Radio Silence, which I absolutely love. I gave it five stars. It's like Radio Rebel, the Disney movie, if people didn't talk to each other. I'm going to give it a Snow White, mixed with a little bit of Grumpy, because I did have some flaws with it, but it doesn't negate the five stars. There's Someone Inside Your House by Stephanie Perkin. I gave this two stars. It's a serial killer that seems to kill popular kids. Grumpy. I didn't like it. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I read The Shepherd of the Hill, and this was my thousandth book, which is really exciting. It's kind of like a prairie version of The Giver. Snow White. Then I read The Midnight Star by Marie Lu, and I gave this three stars. And I don't know, I guess Marie Lu just like can't do endings because I've never read a Marie Lu book that I've been satisfied with the ending. This is about an antagonist who is the protagonist in a YA fantasy world. Because it's just kind of dumb. Then I read The Upside of Unrequited and I gave this three stars again. Becky Albertelli and I, I think uh, her writing and my reading just don't jive. That, I'm gonna give it a dopey. Then I read Yesterday I Was the Moon, which is another poetry book. I gave it four stars and I'm gonna give it a bashful. The Mist by Stephen King and I gave this four stars. This is everything I wanted there's someone inside your house to be but better because it's Stephen King and it's about people who are trapped in a grocery store because there's monsters outside. Snow White. Then I read Let It Snow. This is by about three authors and I gave it three stars. It's just a cute Christmassy book that I thought was what I needed at the time. Bashful. And then I read Wild Card by Marie Lu. And again, girl, you can't end it. I was not satisfied with this at all. I gave this three stars. Everything I liked about Warcross was kind of taken away in Wild Card. I'm gonna have to give you a big old sleepy. And then I read Sadie by Courtney Summers. This is about a girl who seeks revenge for her sister who has died. Is that a spoiler? I don't think so. I doubt anyone's at this part of the video. A good old bashful. Then I read The Devil You Know, which I ended up having a lot of problems with, but if you're looking for just a quick thriller that you might be in a reading slump and you'd be like, that was not the best, but not what I needed. It's just about this girl who goes on a road trip with strangers to Disney World, and of course one of them is messed up. Stranger Danger. Grumpy. Then I read Goose Girl by Shannon Hale for the first time, and I loved it. Snow White. Then I read The Chaos of Standing Still because I was in the mood for another Christmas book. And I would give this an A+. Plus. It's about a girl who gets stuck in an airport because of a blizzard. And luckily, there's a cute boy. So I'm going to give it a dopey, but also a Snow White. Because kind of dumb, but in the best possible way. And the last book I read this year was Nova Ren Suma's A Room Away from the Wolves, which... I don't hear anybody talking about it, and I think they should. It's a great book! I don't know what came over me. I'm sorry. I gave it five stars if you want to know. It's like a gothic mystery that hits all the right tones, and it's what I've been looking for. Snow White. Oh, and that's the last book. So thank you if you've stuck through this entire video. I appreciate you. And let me know your favorite book of 2018 and any recommendations for the next year. So, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you next time. Keep reading and all that jazz. I read The Waves by... Nope. Yeah, oh, I got it right. You probably think that you are better now, better now. I gave it four stars. Or stars. Then I had the little. I read Walt Mitt. Look, dang it! All these paperbacks are gonna be a struggle.